Debugging microcontroller applications over a wireless channel may seem exotic, but it can be an important tool. This can be the case for correcting bugs that occur in the operating environment of the application, if conditions don't allow a wire connection, or present dangers such as moving mechanical parts, electrical, chemical, explosive, or even nuclear or biological hazards. This technology can be more accessible than you might imagine. In this video, we'll show you how to set up a wireless debug connection using Tap and Link Primer. It's not expensive or time consuming, and it gives you the opportunity to try this technique for yourself. Tap and Link is designed to enable wireless connections to mobiles to offboard the HMI for an application. Using the MCU's debug port allows us to create proofs of concept literally in minutes. However, by allowing a connection to a PC running an IDE like Resonance's RIDE 7, we can use the same tap and link to debug the application firmware. RIDE 7 is an application coding, programming, and debugging environment for microcontrollers. Installed with ARKit ARM, it allows the use of tap and link as an unlimited debugging tool for ARM Cortex M based microcontrollers like the STM32 on our Nucleo board. Ride 7 and Arkit Arm are available for free download at support.resonance.com. No software licenses or license activations are required. Just install the software and you're ready to continue. In addition to the Resonance software, we're using the Tap and Link NFC Bluetooth Primer as a wireless programmer debugger. Our target board is an STM32L476 Nucleo. In this demo, we program a new application firmware to the STM32. Using the tap and link doesn't pose any special requirements for the firmware application. We are using a sample application from the STM32Q. We connect tap and link to the Nucleo's debug port, also called the SWD port. Via this port, we can program the STM32 and control the execution of the firmware while we debug. We also do need to disconnect the ST link that is embedded on the Nucleo and connected to the SWD port. This is not a permanent modification and can be reconnected using the jumpers on the Nucleo. Now, let's connect Tap and Link to the Nucleo board. First, to disconnect ST-Link, remove the SWO jumper shown here. Leave the other jumper in place. This dampens bounce-back parasites caused by non-terminated traces. Now connect Tap and Link to the CN7 connector shown here. For programming and debugging the STM32, you'll need to connect all the signals shown here. Final connections will look like this. The USB cord provides power supply to the Nucleo and the Primer. Do not try to debug using the embedded ST-Link while the Tap and Link Primer is connected to the application board. Now on our PC, we'll connect to Tap and Link from our RIDE 7 software. The PC must be running Windows 10 and equipped with a Bluetooth peripheral. Before launching RIDE 7, make sure the Bluetooth peripheral on the PC is activated and broadcasting. Launch RIDE 7 and open a project that corresponds to the firmware that you want to program to your STM32 and then debug. As mentioned for this demo, we are using one of the sample Kyle MDK projects from the STM32 cube. At this point, you can make any changes you want to the application code. RIDE 7 supports you with a full-featured project manager, code editor, and C compiler. When your application is ready with any code modifications that you have made, just click on the debug button to launch a debug session. A pop-up pane opens for tool configuration. Click on the Advanced Settings button. Select Tap and Link and BLE for Bluetooth. Click to scan for available devices and then select your tap and link. Enter the default login and password and click on OK.
With the launch of our debug session, Ride 7 automatically recompiles our application code. This takes into account any modifications that we've made before. Then, via tap and link, Ride 7 reprograms the STM32 on our Nucleo board. That's it! We are now debugging the application code that we have just programmed to the STM32 on our Nucleo board. The software environment provides us a complete range of debugging features. These allow us, for example, to set watch points on variables and view the values of these variables during the execution of the code. We can also start and stop the execution of the code, set breakpoints on specific instructions, and much more. The software demonstrated in this video is available for free download from support.resonance.com. For more information about these and other topics, please visit our website www.iotize.com.